Well, welcome and thanks for joining us for our, our second talk. Um, today we're thinking about Genesis chapter 3. Um, hopefully you've had a chance to, to read that with your group. Um, if you're joining us online, um, have a read of that, that chapter in the Bible um, just before, because this is an important part of the Bible story which helps us understand what happened when there was a good creation that God made to maybe the world we experience now where everything is not good. There's sickness, there's sadness, there's suffering and there's death. So we're going to be thinking a little bit about that this evening. So, so last, last time we were looking, we looked at the first chapter. We had, we had God um, speaking an amazing creation into existence, bringing life, giving humans a special place in it. And so we've moved on to the next part of the story. Um, we know that so far the relationship's been going well. We've met the first two people called Adam and Eve. Um, and they're living in this amazing place with God. Everything seems to be good. But then what happens? Well, I think we noticed it in the story. God's words were rejected. God's words were rejected. God had given Adam and Eve just one rule to obey. Do not eat from this tree, this one special tree, the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And what have they done? They've eaten from it. And it was quite subtle how it happened. Um, they, they were in the garden, they met this, this serpent who was, a, he was quite a, a cunning and crafty animal. And he comes up to Eve and he speaks and he says, did God really say? And that's quite, that's quite crafty because it makes Eve really doubt. Maybe she starts thinking, actually, I don't, I'm not really sure he did say. And then the serpent said, you won't really die if you eat from this tree. And Eve maybe thinks, do you know what, maybe I won't die if I eat from it. And then she sees the fruit, she, she sees that it's good, and so she eats it, and she gave some to Adam, who's there, and they ate it together. They've rejected the, the one rule that this good God, the one who is life, the one who brings life out of his words, they've rejected those words. Everything has gone the wrong way around. The... The humans who are given a special place in creation have listened to this creature and have turned their back on this good God. They reject the one who's given them life. And as a result, the relationship with God is now broken. Now, when I was at, I was at university, a friend of mine dated this, this girl for a while and um, he would uh, make these these chocolate brownies, this chocolate cake for her. Um, he wouldn't let any of the housemates have it. This was specially for this girl, his, his girlfriend. But, you know, they dated for a while and it got to a point where they ended up moving to different cities and it wasn't really working out. So that, that relationship ended, it was broken. And as a result, the, <laughs> the chocolate cake just wasn't made. She didn't receive it anymore because the relationship was broken. Now in the story, we see that Adam and Eve, they've, they've not listened to God. They've re rejected him. They've turned away from his words. And now this relationship is broken. And so we see shame come into the world. I wonder if you noticed just that little detail in the story. Suddenly when they ate this fruit, they realised that they were naked and they tried to get clothes together. It's just a picture of showing they suddenly felt very ashamed. They wanted to hide from God when he was coming round the garden. This God who they had known and loved and been in relationship with, now they felt ashamed in front of him, afraid because of what they've done. So they tried to hide themselves. We also see curses come upon them. So... The relationship of the one that was given life is broken and so now curses come into the world. So we see that the serpent is made lower than the other animals. We see that 
um, when God had told them to fill the earth and, and be fruitful to these humans is now going to be difficult. Child, childbearing will be difficult. We know that man and woman were created to be in this really good relationship with, we, with each other and now we find out that that relationship will be difficult. We're told that they're supposed to look after the land and the creation but we find out that it's going to be hard. The ground and the creation will be a difficult place. So can you see the implications of this relationship being broken? The God who speaks things into life, whose word brings life, if you turn from him, these curses come. Things start to fall apart. And we also see um, death come into the world. Now you might think that that's, sounds quite harsh, but if you think about the way that the story has so far set up who God is. We hear God is the one who gives life, who brings life, who's the source of life. And so if you're cut off from him, that's going to lead to, to death. So we see in the story, Adam and Eve are thrown out of this garden. They can no longer live in the place with God. They're cut off from this tree of life. They're left outside and eventually they will die. And you might think, okay, that's all well and good for, for Adam and Eve. This was their problem. But actually, we all share in that same, that same likeness. So here's, a, here's just a quick photo. I hope you can see it on the, on the screen. Um, this is a photo of me and my three brothers. Now, if you were to meet me and my brothers, uh, you would very quickly tell that we probably had the same parents because we all look fairly similar. Um, in fact, particularly my older brother, when we were younger, we, the people thought we were twins. We were so close in age. And, and if you met my father, you'd be able to say that he's my father and my grandfather. We all share in this same family likeness. And this Bible story wants to say that actually... What's wrong with the world? Yes, Adam and Eve have done something. But the Bible says that we all share in this same likeness of Adam. In many ways, humanity's always rejected God, always turned our back on him. We've wanted to be gods ourselves in charge of our own lives. We all share this same problem of, of shame. We don't really want other people to know what we're like. We maybe thought if we meet a God who knows everything and sees everything, that makes us feel uncomfortable and maybe like we'd try to hide. And so when I think about what's wrong with God's amazing world, it's actually me, um, us humans. Now that's, that could be a bad place to stop, but the story doesn't stop there because we're given two, two little things that show us of God's kindness. So one is if you notice that when Adam and Eve in the story were taken out of the garden, God actually provided clothes for them. And you think, what a kind thing to do. The reason they wanted clothes is because they felt ashamed. They didn't want God to look at them. They wanted to hide from him. They felt unclean. And then God says, look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clothe you. I'm going to get something that's going to cover your shame. Now, it's a small thing, but it shows us some of the kindness of God. Maybe this is a God who, who although humans are separate from him, he wants to to cover their shame. He wants to help them. And the second thing we see is a, is a promise. It's actually a promise that we're going to follow now for the next few weeks at Explore. And that's the promise of, of someone coming. Now, I didn't know if you noticed, but in the middle of, of the curses, God had said to, um, to Adam and Eve, he says he's going to put enmity, that's he's going to put this, um, this frustration between uh, you and the woman, that's with the serpent. And between your offspring and hers, he will crush your head and you will 
will strike his heel. Now that's that. There's quite a lot going on there. That seems slightly strange. But essentially, what God is saying in here is there's going to be someone who's going to come, who's going to crush this serpent and everything he represents, all these curses. There's going to be someone who comes who will, instead of giving curses to the people, is going to bring blessing to the people. Instead of bringing death to the world, is going to bring life. And so the rest of the story that we're going to be following is we're going to think, where can we find the person who is going to bring life, who's going to bring blessing, who's going to reverse these curses? Now, we might have lots of questions, um, again, about some of the stuff that's come up, and that's fine. And so we will spend a bit of time discussing those in our group now. Mm -hmm.